Carlos did his undergrad degree in geology in Brazil at Pará State Federal University, a master's in soil science at Penn State University, and a PhD in geography at University of California, Santa Barbara. Since 1992, he's worked at Amazon, an NGO dedicated to promoting sustainable development in the Amazon through research, policy analysis, dissemination, and capacity building. 2010, he was awarded the Skoll Award in Social Entrepreneurship, and he's published more than 75 studies in peer review papers, book chapters, symposiums, and reports. So everyone, please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Souza. Thanks. Thanks, Dave, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here to share what we're doing in Brazil using these great technologies. Uh, I'm going to do, besides that, I'm, I'm going to also try to share some ideas that we are pushing the technology towards crowdsourcing, how we are actually engage local users to, to take actions to stop deforestation in Brazil. And the third thing I want to do in this presentation is to, to share uh, what we are developing next. So we are going beyond SADI, which is the Sistema de Alerta de Desmatamento. We are bringing new tools to improve the, the, the forest monitoring system, which is going to, to be the SAD Plus version of the system. Uh, in order to, to get crowdsourced forest monitoring, we need people working with this type of data that we can generate using Google Earth Engine. This map shows municipalities across the Brazilian Amazon. The, the map changes every month. This is out of date. Through the CGI, which is the uh, GIS Training Center, it's a program that we have at Amazon, we have trained over 600 people from these municipalities from different sectors, from local governments, from local NGOs, communities, to use the deforestation alert system and other type of uh, spatial information to, to fight against illegal deforestation, illegal logging, and to protect the, the parks, conservation units in, in, the, in the region. So we are also expanding this, this work in, in, in Brazil across the neighboring countries in the Pan-Amazonia region. So we have a network there called RISGI. They have been trained to use all these tools. So the next uh, step that we, we want to do is to, to use Earth Engine, especially SAD Plus, for the Pan-Amazonia Forest Monitoring Program uh, using uh, this network. I'll go quickly about what we do in Brazil in terms of the forest monitoring program in the Amazon region. Of course, deforestation is a major problem. We, we use MODIS data, Landsat data, whatever data is available to keep track of deforestation. Particularly, what I'll be talking more today, it's about a deforestation alert system, the, the SAD system. Back in 2007, we started this, this project because the lack of transparency about the official deforestation data in Brazil. The, the, the information was out of date. We didn't have, it's usually two, one year out of date. And sometimes the government was holding the, the information to the society. So Amazon decided to, to launch this program. It was a very ambitious program. We didn't have all the technology, just ideas and, and the willingness to, to push this agenda. And suddenly, things changed in Brazil as a result because we, every month we were, we were reporting deforestation. And our vision is that we, we should turn deforestation rates as a kind of uh, metric indicator for the, for the national, for, for the national uh, level, like inflation. Brazil, Brazilians are crazy about inflation rates. We, ha we had the hyperinflation in the past, and we keep, keep track of inflation. So that's what we want to do with deforestation ra rates, is in, in call the attention of opinion makers, of the social media, of the, the newspapers about the, the, the threats. Uh, but, and then we have the mapping, the monitoring of degraded, degraded forests, especially caused by logging. We map illegal roads. Over 300,000 kilometers of roads, illegal roads, had been identified in, in, across the Brazilian Amazon. And of course, with all this information, we could do a lot of modeling. In this example, we have carbon uh, emission models and other type of models to, to identify risky areas. 
Sati Earth Engine, that's the, the, the current version of the system. It's very simple now. The, the fr this is the front end, just to give you an idea. We can select, the, we have the mega cells, where we can select areas where we, we will investigate if there is any forest change. The intermediate cells, there is a color ramp that tells the analyst where we should go and see, verify validated information. And then, then you go to that map level uh, uh, cell. <coughs> the, once it's, it's validated, we can publish the, the information on the internet. And one of the, the ways we are publishing is through Global Forest Watch. We, we also have an interface in the SADI Earth Engine to, to, to visualize the reports uh, about the deforestation alerts. The, the next step as part of the SADI Plus is to bring Landsat imagery to the, to the system to improve. Because SADI is based on modes. It's a coarse resolution imagery. We can detect deforestation uh, above 10 hectares. So we, we are missing the small clearings, forest clearings. So by, by bringing Landsats, we'll be able to detect the, this type of uh, forest change. And as deforestation declines in Brazil, we have more, uh, the majority of the deforestation that is, is happening is now is below 10 hectares. So we need a tool to, to, to keep track of this type of clearance. And then we also develop the algorithm to, to, to keep track of the pixel history. The, all the, the, so the pixel doesn't go to, to, to clearance. Uh, it could go from forest to, to, to non-forest through deforestation. But we have legal logging. We have fires. And we have uh, all the, the, the possible paths uh, that, that should be mapped and detected. And that's what we want to implement in the, the SAD system. I'm going to go quickly now because I have two minutes. I, I was slow. And so what we're doing now, we are implementing all the image tools, which is a software we developed in Earth Engine, so to integrate with the SAD system. And, and it can be applied everywhere. This is an example from Louisiana States. We applied our models there. It's working well. The next level is to connect this information with uh, people on the ground. We have SAD Mobile which is developed by Alan Lins. Uh, it's a, a tool that allows people to verify. It's really important to verify this kind of thing in order to start an enforcement process. And all the forms that we, we use are based on, on, on legal forms suggested by public prosecutors. So in, in they go out in the field, collect the information, and they have enough information documented to start the enforcement process. It's still low level of enforcement, but there are cases that are moving fast in the court level. It is are really important to, to push this agenda. The, the, in terms of impact, we have several cases, very, lots, lots of cases. I just want to share one case with you today. Uh, we are under the presidential election. Three weeks ago, the government said that they were not going to release the official deforestation statistics. And deforestation uh, season starting in August. Uh, they said just after the election in November, the, we would have uh, the deforestation statistics. Of course, Marina Silva was there in the debate, and all the environmental agenda was part of the debate. But last Friday, we released the information, the, our reports. And we had an increase in deforestation alerts. If you compare August to, uh, 2013, 2014, we can see increase in deforestation in the first two months of the deforestation season. And this came up in Folha de São Paulo. And guess what? Last Sunday, in the presidential debate, the, the two candidates that are running out for the election, they had to discuss deforestation in the debate. This is re really a, the kind of impact that we want to, to have. And to complete, just to summarize the, the, this, this, the, what we, we mean by impact. So access to information, identify new threats in the deforestation hotspot, rapid response to enforce the law, aumenting transparency, and support policy to control deforestation. That's the kind of thing that we, we push the, the, the SAD system. I have zero minutes, but I go quickly through the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the uh, summary of crowdsourcing. Image processing in the cloud, so it's possible. It, it used to be a dream, but it's possible. Multi sensor classification, image stacks over very large area, several maps. Don't be afraid of different maps results. We, we can deal with that. We can, we can deal with uncertainty. We can com compute agreement, disagreement, and improve the maps. Integration with ground data, protocols for map validation is really important. I, I, I see 
in the near future, we have like mapping certification process in, because decision makers, they need this kind of thing. They need uh, this kind of certified information. Quick access to information and we have to monitor the impact. Thanks very much for your attention. for a couple of questions. Okay. For me, uh, this uh, concept is very useful uh, for our country also uh, in Nepal. Uh, I would like to know about the, because on behalf of the government, I'm working in the government and the, in the district, uh, as a district forest manager. Uh, uh, we have to work uh, to maintain the law and order, to reduce the deforestation and the, to penalize the who uh, do, involved in the deforestation. Is there any systems, I would like to know that, is there any systems uh, to make this all information uh, as a proof of evidence to penalize our, uh, the people who involve in the deforestation or the company who involve the deforestation? Yeah, that's, I think, the whole idea behind the, one of the applications we, we have for SAGE mm -hmm. is to, to enforce the law. Uh, it, it goes beyond detect, detecting the, the force change, the clearance. We have to find the cause. Who is doing that? That's the, the most complicated part. But I, I think with the information we can provide to the public prosecutors, to the environmental agents, they can start a, 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 an investigation, they can start the process and reach out to the, the level where they, they, they can enforce the law. There are cases, very interesting cases in Brazil, where they don't, for example, find who is in charge of the illegal deforestation? What person is exact or company is in charge? But they create an embargo, which means that area, products coming from that area, companies will be responsible if they buy like cattle, if they buy soy for this, the, the embargo area. So that's really another way, you, if you don't find who is in charge of the, 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 the problem, you can create the embargo area. That's another lesson that we, we share from Brazil with other countries. Thanks a lot.